guys kind of don't like each other, you know, and, uh, but they did, and New England doesn't care. You know what, you give us somewhat of a fair uh, compensation, they'll trade anybody anybody because they don't fear anybody. But I found it ironic that he did go from the Patriots to the Colts since there's no love loss between those two organizations, so. Yeah. So let's, let's. That definitely was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Complete your thought. I was just say that that definitely that definitely was a, was, was interesting and just it's I think that, that Bill Belichick maybe was just with the, was more in the in the in the frame of mind that we always beat the Colts so I don't care. <laughs> exactly. I agree. All right. So let's go on to the second half of what we talked about. Eric Ebron. What is going on with Ebron? He had a fine year last year, but now he hasn't been able to catch the football. And what makes it even more interesting is this guy playing in a dome like he did in Detroit. Yeah, here's the deal with Ebron. We uh, there were there's a lot of different opinions on Eric Ebron and how he would do this year. Um, if if Andrew Luck was still playing, I have a feeling that this would be a different story. Okay. I think really it was just he was able to develop a great chemistry with Andrew Luck, um, and just the way that I don't know if it was the way that the ball came out of Andrew Luck's hands, just you know, was something that he was more comfortable that Ebron was more comfortable with compared to you know with Brissett or even Stafford. Um, but obviously, obviously, this is I mean that's been the main difference. Um, now you look at you look at what Ebron did last year. And I want to say like he had a ridiculous amount of catches that ended up as touchdowns. I want to say he only finished with like 40, 45 catches, but ended up with ten touchdowns. Like twenty five percent of all his catches ended up in the ended up uh, in, in touchdowns. Right. Which that is not a that, that's just not a sustainable number. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was bound for some regression. Um, and when, again, when luck went out, we kind of figured that was going to happen. Um, one of the things that, that we looked at, that I looked at specifically, was when Jacoby Brissett played in 2017 as a starting quarterback, Jack Doyle had a very good year. Um, I want to say Doyle finished with like 80 catches, like 900 yards and four touchdowns or something like that. You know, enough to, to be in a top 10 tight end. Um, and I'm just wondering if maybe it's just they haven't been able to really develop a good enough chemistry to get things going for Ebron. Again, he was he was on the verge of regression anyways, and okay. just I think that you know it's kind of the regression along with the fact that he no longer has uh, Andrew Luck. I just combine combine all that together is kind of caused where we're at now. Okay, so I'm going to ask you another thing. Here's a guy that was selected 10th by the Lions out of North Carolina. Would you go as far, Ryan, to say that Eric Ebron has been a bust in the National Football League? If he was drafted 10th overall, I would have to say yes. Yeah, me too. Me too. I was just curious. Because at some point or another, you have to determine a bust. A couple other yep. things I want to add, and then if you have any other things you want to bring to, feel free to do it. Jay Gruden says the Redskins don't have a plan at quarterback right now. That's not what you are looking for at this time of the year. One would have thought there would have been a plan, but not, not, but he didn't have one. Well, and this really this this really hurts Terry McLaurin owners, people who went and got him on the waiver wire after he started off. He was the first, um, you know, I think I said this last week. He's the first rookie ever in NFL history to have. Um, I want to say it was at least. Five catches for 50 yards and a touchdown in all three in each of his first three games, um, and so he has he has by far been the bright spot on that offense. And now uh, Case Keenum actually was in a boot today at practice, and so it looks like you know we're we're looking at I believe Colt McCoy and uh, and Dwayne Haskins, and so uh, Haskins obviously has the most. Um, rapport and chemistry with McLaurin, uh, both having played at, at Ohio State last right, year. Right, right. The true. problem is Haskins just hasn't been able to really, uh, you know, figure out um, professional defenses, NFL defenses. And, you know, last week had came in for for a struggling Case Keenum who had 37 yards and a t- and, and an interception when he came out, and Haskins went on to throw three more interceptions. Mm-hmm. Um, now again, McLaurin was out with a hamstring injury, which doesn't help, you know, not having your, your number one um, receiving target. 
that being said, I, it's just this is a tough situation. I think at this point, you know, if Keenum's not healthy, just stick with Haskins. Give Haskins the the chance to play. Take his lumps. Um, you know, learn how to do it, and hope and pray that he's not, a, you know, a Jamarcus Russell type. Well, no, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to put Jay Gruden on the unemployment line this week. But I think we can probably both agree, Ryan, that if he loses to the Miami Dolphins, ooh, now there is, Keith Jackson would say. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, that, that very well could be a possibility because the Redskins are bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, you know, I mean, it's, and, I mean, their offense really, for the most part, hasn't really clicked. I mean, it has somewhat. But then their defense is bad enough that they're just giving up points left and right. I mean, they've put on a good show in the first half against Philadelphia in week one and then just got absolutely torn apart in the second half. So, really, it's, it's their defense that's, that's, that has a lot of the issues. Um, and obviously, the quarterback situation isn't great. You have Derek, you know, Darius Geis go on IR. So, for the most part, it's just been a rough all-around season for them. I could see... Jay Gruden getting the axe before the season's over. Well, I, I can see him getting it after the Miami game, to be honest with you. If you're losing to a team that bad, Ryan, and I mean that bad, not like we've been very complimentary of the Miami Dolphins on this show, and until they no. win one, I'm not so sure we'll ever be complimentary right away. But I can see him getting canned after the Redskins if they lose to the Redskins. If the Redskins lose to the Dolphins. I can see Jay Gruden collecting some of Daniel Snyder's money and not having to work for it anymore. But, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, Daniel Snyder's had a history of going through coaches, so it's another one. I wonder how many former coaches and players he's actually paid off. You're talking about well, well, Mike Shanahan, too. Right, I know. And then you're talking about a guy that once tried to charge his fans to appear at training camp. Do you remember that? Yep. Yeah, so well, leave it to Dan, the man, okay, but we'll see. We'll, the Jay Gruden watch will be on, especially uh, whether when he goes to Hard Rock Stadium, okay, whether he ends up dealing with Hard Rock in terms of taking hard knocks in another way. So with that said, let's talk about the New England Patriots again, okay, uh, that Steven Goskowski will undergo season-ending hip surgery. And we're talking about a kicker. What's going on with the Patriots' kicking situation? Having seen that Goskowski was put on IR, I don't know if they already have um, someone in place to take over for him. In terms of fantasy, Goskowski has always been one of the one of the top kickers to get in fantasy, simply because the the Patriots put up so many points. Um, and Goskowski was, for the most part, a very reliable kicker, um, decent leg, you know. So he was kicking, you know, he was kicking fifty plus yarders. That being said, it'll, it'll be interesting to see who they bring in uh, to take over, uh, if they haven't already, and I just haven't seen the notification on it yet. Um, I think that there's the whoever, you know, taking the fantasy look at it, whoever comes in to be the kicker for them could have a decent, uh, could be a decent addition in fantasy football for those leagues that still have kickers. Well, I got to ask you a question, and I know that you probably may have heard of it, but you weren't born then, okay, because I was really young, okay, once upon a time. Okay, you ever heard of Tom Dempsey? Uh, yes. You did? Okay. Everybody knew he had a square foot, right? Correct. He had well, part, of his foot, uh, part of his foot was empty, I believe. Was it, was it actually from... Was it from military service, or was it just was it a birth defect? I can't remember. Well, I don't know. He had a square foot either way. <laughs> well, I'll bet the Patriots w w wish they had that, his square foot to kick him right to the uprights, don't you? But I will tell you this, Ryan. I am impressed that you have heard of his name. Well, I'm one of those. I'm one of those kids that I'm one of those guys. When I was a kid, I used to always look up. Um, I used to always get from the. Uh, the, uh, the library, the Guinness Book of World Records, and I'd always look up all the sports <laughs> records and all that kind of stuff. So, right. I, Tom Dempsey was the original guy to have the 63 yard field goal. Yeah, he was. And who did he and, kick uh, it against? That I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, he kicked it against the Detroit Lions at Tulane Stadium before they had the New Orleans Superdome. But I'm not holding that against you at all, 
just get that, okay? The fact that you knew Tom Dempsey, I am impressed. Okay. Well, not only, well and not only, the one other thing that to remember about that is that's back when the um, when the uprights were actually on the goal line. They weren't in the back of the they weren't in the back of the end zone. So that means he was actually kicking, and so 63 yarders instead of kicking from the 47, he was actually kicking from the 37 on the opposite side of the field. Yeah, well, there you go. I love those little intangible statistics. So, but you know what? For all you listeners out there, this skull root kid here does his homework, and I, I'm impressed. And not only are we giving you fantasy numbers, we're talking about the Guinness Book of World Records, and this guy follows his pigskin. So, just thought I'd bring it up. I'm impressed, Ryan Skull root. So, do you have any other notes you want to go ahead and add before we wrap up the program in about six minutes? Uh, I think that was I think that was about it. That was all I had uh, in in terms of in terms of this week. Okay, well, you know, for all those individuals out there that are wondering about the Packers and the Cowboys, do you have any preliminary observations uh, about what you think will happen? And I know we'll get into more of this on the Sports Exchange tomorrow, but, uh, you know, I'm just curious to see where your head is at. Is it in Big D or Big G? Fantasy-wise, I'm not so sure. I don't know who's going to win this game. But I think that this very well could be a defensive battle, just like it was on Monday Night Football between or Sunday Night Football between Dallas and New Orleans. Um, both of these defenses are very, very good, right. uh, especially against quarterbacks. Dak Prescott and Aaron and and uh, Aaron Rodgers are going up against the second best and fifth best defenses when it comes to giving up fantasy points to the quarterback. These two defenses have been absolutely brutal on quarterbacks, and so for me, this should be a very, a very defensive. Well, it should be a very defensive game, but again, with how I picked this last week with games, I could be way off. Well, That's just the way I see it, and I think that I think in the end, I think that Dallas has more of their weapons intact, which I think will put them over, uh, give them the edge over Green Bay. Well, I got to tell you, I got Aaron Rodgers, and listen, Aaron, whether you win or lose a game is one thing. Just make sure you make your number, so uh, <laughs> because he's the only quarterback on my roster. Not that that won't probably change by the end of the by the end of the night, but uh, you know, I, I was glad to see Rodgers at least get thirty two fantasy points last week. Cause, uh, and the only thing that I'm intrigued about now, when I think about Rodgers, at what point or another, Ryan, now that we're on this subject, do you see them him finally grasping? the uh, Lafleur offense if he isn't starting to come around now? Uh, I think it's, I, I think that he has a grasp of it. I think that there's just, it's still, it's still a different offense from what they've run. And so I think it's just the whole offense in general. Right. Um, there's still been a lot of, there's been some, some procedure issues in terms of um, false starts and, and some holes and that sort of thing with the offensive line, um, some some motion stuff with with wide receivers. So there's just I think it's still the entire offense is still trying to figure out the floor system. I think it'll still be a couple weeks until they really get it nailed down. But once they do, they should be in good shape. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll end it on that uh, note here, just so you know, everybody. Ryan Scoville will be on the Sports Exchange tomorrow night. He'll probably, uh, he obviously leads off the program. And he'll be followed by Anthony Wood. And uh, stay tuned for every uh, update on Facebook for the rest of the guests, as well as I'll also announce them on Twitter. So on behalf of Ryan Scoville, this is Scott Morgan Ross. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And Ryan, guess what? We get to do it again tomorrow, don't we, buddy? All right, good night, everybody, from Scott Morganroth and Ryan Schoolroot here on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network.